Welcome to It's Supernatural with Robin Show, where we share personal experiences and scriptures on how you can walk in the supernatural. The show is mixed with off-grid living, toxic-free lifestyle, and a touch of politics. Join our host today for today's podcast, and remember, it's natural to be supernatural. DNA, I'm going to bring you some scientific facts, and I'm going to bring you some spiritual facts. So, since there's at least seven of you on here, I'm going to go ahead and not waste time and get teaching, because... I'm going to try to condense this, but I know that I have a habit of doing like a half an hour video teaching. And I'm trying, going to try to talk a little bit slower. Okay, some of the stuff that I think is really, really exciting and important scientifically on your DNA is what I'm going to read to you right now. But let me tell you that I have uh, put everything, all my scriptures and everything I'm talking about and where I get my information on a PDF file, which you can download um, if you're in my group, Angels, Supernatural Wine, and other normal uh, things, normal Christian experiences. Oops, there. I needed to turn my computer down so it wouldn't, um, I wouldn't hear myself talking twice, and you wouldn't hear me talking three times. So on my uh, video here, I'm going to put the link uh, to my group so that you can download the PDF file. So this is where uh, the Lord told me to start today. Now this has gotten, um, I don't have it right here, but I do have it in the PDF file where this, this teaching, where this scientific facts come from. It says DNA typing is based on the fact that every cell in the human body contain, contains identical DNA and that everyone's DNA is different. Okay, DNA testing can be done by collecting DNA from a small amounts of hair, bone, skin tissue, tissue, saliva, blood, and so on. According to the science of epigenetics, the study of how the environment factors out, outside of DNA influence changes in gene expression, stem cells and even DNA can be altered through magnetic fields. Okay, keep that thought in mind. Heart co Boy, such big words here I can't say. Heart coherence, positive mental state, and intention. Okay, so they're saying DNA, stem cells, and even DNA can be altered through magnetic fields. Uh, what you believe, positive mental, and through intentions. Top scientists around the world agree. Jet, okay, so this is exciting scientifically they showed that you can change your dna by what you believe what you think and by magnetic magnetic fields now we have a magnetic field around us we have um sound is vibration and and all of this kind of works together it's all vibration um words are sound and so on so keep all that in mind now uh, let's see here. This is a study uh, done in Italy. Dr. Ventura has studied through lab testing that the DNA of stem cells can be altered using magnetic field frequencies. Okay, so sound is frequencies. Okay, words are sounds and frequencies. Okay, so this is one of the, another place says this human cell expression in a quantum nutrient diet changes your DNA. This is so cool. If you want to nourish our bodies at a cellular level and not promote disease, the Institute recommends an abundant diet of quantum nutrients. That is so cool. I love quantum physics. Um, when we are stressed or negative, our biological energy reserves are diverted from the important task of regenerating and repairing the body. We can counteract this cellular starvation by focusing on genuine state of care, appreciation, and love. Isn't that something God tells us to walk in love? Right there it says walking in love changes our DNA. So cool. Uh, these positive, positive emotions enhance our energy system and feed our body even down to the level of DNA. <laughs> Isn't that so cool? Uh, and he goes on and he says he, call, he calls this quantum, nutri, nu, quantum nutrients. So, 
And that was just a quick study because I was saying, God, I was asking God, I said, because one of the scriptures says that he, about how his uh, bones uh, cause health in his body or how uh, something about bones and health in the body. And I was asking God about the DNA in our bones uh, because when we take communion, the communion is, oops, I forgot to get my communion. I'll have to grab that in a little while. Um, when we take communion, it is the body and the blood of Jesus. It is a symbol of his physical body and blood, which is a symbol of his of the spirit realm. So it's spirit, physical, physical, spirit, and it's just a big, huge cycle. In other words, um, taking communion, the covenant. Oh, there's just so much to say here. Let me let me go back to the beginning here, and. <laughs> talk about this okay so you heard frequency and magnetic fields change your dna and they have done this they can cure cancer by using sound they cure cancer they have to do it in mexico uh in other countries because the united states takes anything that is not pharmaceutical and uh that they can't financially profit off of or control they take that anything that is not um uh, you can make money off of that. They can baggage. Uh, they they um, cause that. They call it. Um, uh, they discredit it, and they make the person seem like the, the the doctors seem like they're crazy. So therefore, the doctors have to move out of the country in order to heal people because pharmaceutical causes them to commit suicide, like the eighty five doctors of natural healing that have been killed lately over a couple of three four years. So. Um, it, it, everything's curable. It's uh, it, it's curable. It is with the word, with vibrations, with sound, with health, with healing, all this stuff. Anyway, so communion is something God has been amazingly, awesomely teaching me about. It was it was the armor of God, and sometimes I go back to that. But communion, man, God, I am praying for wisdom, knowledge, and discernment, understanding, and communion because it is so so powerful. And the person that got me on this track was Ian Clayton. Uh, I was listening to his awesome prayer, uh, or whatever you want to call it, his teaching on communion. And in the back of this PDF file you can download, uh, it gives you those links. So, this is how I start communion. So, let me grab something. Okay, I got some corn chips here. Yuck, corn chips. I don't eat that stuff. And I'm trying to get rid of this fat here. Go back on my ketogenic diet. So I'm just going to use a corn chip. I have used nuts, breads, anything that has some kind of substance in it. Um, and I use that for my communion. Nuts, bread, seeds, anything. Okay, and I just have a little bit of water here in my hockey, ice hockey in my hockey uh, <laughs> water bottle. And this is basically how I take communion. Okay, and I say this physically out loud because words are vibration. Words are spiritual and words are alive and words take the physical things of this world and create uh, the Words are spiritual and the spiritual created all physical. So I take my communion uh, I have my my stuff here. I don't do anything fancy. God don't care and I say this okay words are for creating words on earth as they are in heaven through faith Hebrews 11 says we understand the world was framed by the word of God okay so that things that were not seen were created by uh, things that were seen were created by things that were not seen okay then in Genesis 1 it goes over God said let there be light and there was light because he said what he wanted and John for uh, 1 4 says in the beginning was the word and the word was God all things were made through the word him and nothing was made without the word so the word of God created everything. So I just review that. I remind myself of that. And in the word is life. So the word is living inside of us. We have the life in us. We're created in his image. So we speak for things. We call for things that we want. Two or more agree. You can have what you say. Vibrations again. Okay. So and I say, so therefore, I create my world with the words of God. I sow and create my harvest. Okay, then I do what Kat Kerr calls a soul, soul cleansing prayer. And this is because your soul, uh, you're created in the image of the Holy Spirit, the Father, Son, uh, the Word, which is the Son, the Holy Spirit, and God, Father. 
Okay, the three parts and three parts to one person. We have three parts. We are a spirit being first of all. That's the part that's born again. We live in a physical body, and a physical, and that allows us authority and dominion to change the physical world. And we have a spirit. A soul is our mind, uh, will, and emotions. So, um, our soul, as when we have sex with another person, we become one, and everything that is attached to that person becomes attached to you. And that's why for God talks about fornication and how it's a, 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 a sin against our body because that fornication connects you with someone else and everything that is on them comes on you. All the spirits they have, it's, you give a piece of your soul away to, the, from, to them. So you, you, um, you get more than you bargain for. You don't just have a few, pleasure, a few minutes of pleasure of sex, but you also get every spirit, demon, every trauma they went through. Every bad experience they went through, the spirits that allow, uh, got legally allowed to attach them through that thing is now attached to you. Okay, So you call back all layers of your soul. Your soul is like a book open up. Like this is my hockey book. And if you open up this book and hold it like this, all these little pages in between is, is like our, our soul. This is our soul. And this is our soul. And each, uh, you tear off a piece and give it to someone else. And that's basically what happens when you have sex or when you get attached to a person, place, or thing. Uh, you give away a piece of your soul. And so this is a soul cleansing prayer. And when I'm taking communion, this is the step that I do next. I say, and this is from Kat Kerr. Okay, I say, I loosen every, and I kind of change it around my way, the way God showed me. I loosen every form of darkness off my soul, my body, and my mind. Every torment, every negative word, every lie, every thought, every wrong thinking, every stronghold, every illegal thing. Because Satan is a legalist and everything that's on you is because legally it can be. So you have to go to the courts of heaven and repent and so on and get it taken care of. And this is the beginning steps here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Every um, judgment, let's see... Uh, Illegal thing, high thing, and barrier. And those are what, if you look in the word, it says that our weapons, our warfare, are mighty through God. They're not physical. They're the host of heaven. They're the sword of God. They tear down every barrier, every high thing, every illegal thing, and so on. So I'm using those words from the Bible. <clears throat> every accusation, every words of hate, unforgiveness, unbelief, trauma. That's a big thing. Anytime you went to surgery of any kind, you could get spirits attached to you. And words spoken over you while you're um, out and under. All generational curses, all iniquities. And I ask for forgiveness for any of these things I have agreed with. Or spoken or thought about myself or another person. And I forgive anyone that I have offense against. I loosen from my soul, my mind, and my body. All these things now in Jesus' name. Go. I break them off with me. I loosen these soul ties with any person, place, or thing that's not of God. <clears throat> then I call back any layers of my soul. I say, I call back any layers of my soul that I've given to a person, place, or thing. Come back now. Now, I bind those layers of the soul to my soul. And in Jesus' name, I bind the love of God, the peace of God, the knowledge, the understanding of God. To my soul, I bind blessings, the provision, health, wealth, power, words, protection, destiny, kingdom, and heaven culture to my soul. I receive it now. And then I say, Father, your word desires that I prosper as my soul prospers. So I prosper now in my health, in my soul, in every way. And, I, and I, then I say, Father, as I take communion, okay, I receive the record of your own DNA that you put into Mary. Well, you put it into Jesus who was in Mary. Okay. So this is the exciting part. The DNA record of Jesus carries everything he ever did in his life. Everything his father did. So the DNA of Jesus carries the memory, the record of God. And the record of Jesus. And everything that Jesus did on the earth is in the DNA record. So, when you take communion, you 
are taking inside of you the physical the representation of the DNA of the body and the blood of Jesus that has the record of everything that he did. Now remember, there's two places in the, in the Bible that says that if everything that Jesus did was written down, there would not even be enough books in the world to contain it. But you, through communion, have that memory. Okay? So, I just take a piece. <laughs> it's strange eating in front of people. I am... Sometimes I just take one piece. Sometimes we sit down and enjoy a meal together. So, in Jesus' name, I eat the body and the blood. My representative, this corn chip and this water has peppermint in it, is my representation of the blood of Jesus. Mm, so good. And I take that representation in Jesus' name. Now, here's where it gets really fun. Okay. So, I say, Father, I thank you. This part here is Eon Clayton, what I learned from Eon Clayton. It says, so, Father, I want to thank you for your record that you put in Jesus, your DNA and Jesus' DNA, and that you gave me that DNA. And as an act of communion, I'm supposed to remember everything that Jesus did on the earth for me. How do I do that? Through communion, not just through reading the word, but he says, I have so many things to tell you, but you can't understand them. You can't take them now. Well, I can take them now. The disciples couldn't then, but the Holy Spirit has more to tell us. So by receiving communion, I'm receiving the DNA of Jesus. I'm receiving the the record of everything Jesus did on the earth, the memory of it. Bring it, speaking in tongues, bring it to my understanding, uh, my visualization of actually seeing it happen. And having more understanding and memorization of everything that Jesus did through the act of taking communion. So, I mean, this is so powerful and so exciting. So, I say, I thank you. This And this part's uh, what Ian Clayton uh, taught about the DNA that you put your own DNA in Mary when you overshadowed her. You came to earth in the fullness of God and you, you bore inside Mary's womb the testimony record of of the power of your DNA. Okay, that is so cool. That is so cool. Then <clears throat> I say, thank you, Jesus, that you carried that record. Thank you that you bore the pain and the sorrow of the cross so that, so that, as I eat it and drink it, that testimony record goes inside of me. It's your record on the earth of what and who you are. Okay? And I conform to your image and bear it on the face of the earth. I come into agreement with the testimony of your word. I take the body and the blood and I'm brought back to a perfect son. Remember, Jesus did not die so we could be good people. Jesus died so we could be family people. Okay, Family has relationship. God wants to have relationship with us. He wants to see us face to face. He wants to play with us. He wants to supply for us. He wants to be everything to us. It's about a relationship. It's not about being good or doing good. Now, I'm not saying that's not important. Being good and doing good is the result of having a relationship. Okay. Robin Bremer is a best-selling author, a publishing coach, and a business developer. She has written over 50 books and published and promoted many other authors' books to the bestseller's status. She got her start by paying almost $2,000 to publish her first book. She also had to pay $12 a book and buy a box of books. This is the same story of many other authors who just paid too much. After publishing her own books for years, her passion is to help other authors be successful in writing, publishing, and promoting without emptying their wallet or purse. She does this through her podcast called Self-Publishing Bestseller, Hints, Tips, and Interviews. To learn more or to start the publishing process of your own book, go to www.robinbremer.net. That's R-O-B-I-N-B-R-E-M-E-R.net. Okay, I spilled it. I needed to do that with a straw. 
Okay. Um, then this is another cool part. This is this is a part of the revelation um, God gave me. First Corinthians eleven twenty four and twenty six. It says that Jesus is the body and the bread from heaven, and his body was broken for, okay, for you do this in remembrance of me. When God showed me, he said, my body was broken for. In other words, his body was broken instead of my body. So, therefore, everything he did for me, he wants me to receive because his body was broken so that I could receive it. So, he is not withholding from you. He never, ever withholds from you any good thing. He doesn't withhold healing or anything else. He already did it for you. 2,000 years ago, before you were ever born, Jesus died for every sin that you didn't even commit yet because you weren't even born. He died for every sickness and every disease and every poverty and every lack before you were even born. He forgave you for it. So the sins that you commit after you're born again, he forgave before you were born again. The sins that you committed before you were born again, he already died for. Okay. So he's not withholding it from you. Okay. So he says, do this in remembrance of me. Remembrance means he wants you to think about, to meditate, to call, to remembrance, to believe for, to experience everything that he died for. That's why communion is so important. It's not just drinking the wine and the, and the body and saying, but that's it. This is so deep, so powerful. Okay, so you're doing it in remembrance. You you're, you want to remember what his body and his blood did for you. So you can rehearse it, think about it, talk about it, do what I do. Okay, Jesus said, do this, and it, it gives you life from heaven. Okay, now, um, well, I'll get to that in a second. Then I, I read Proverbs 4.22, life and health is in his flesh. And then I say, your body and blood restores everything to me that is under the curse. And read Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28 that goes over the curse is everything that you should not have in your body. Okay. And you need to believe for the body and the blood of Jesus healing you of those things. So I say, Father, Jesus, according to your body and your blood, you restore everything under the curse as I take your body and your blood into me. It's vitamins, minerals, and nutrition to me. It rids my body of all free radicals, all toxics, all pollutants, all aging, all weak cells, broken systems in my body. It restores my youth. It gives me strength and wholeness. Like on earth as it is in heaven, nothing is broken and nothing is missing. I command brokenness in my mind, my soul, and my body to be made whole. The word is medicine and health to all my flesh, to my mind and to my soul. Now, this part is really good. I love this. It is an anti-flu medicine. It's an, in, in, it's an anti-inflammatory medicine, anti-stress, anti-fear, anti-virus, anti-fungus, anti-aging, anti-amoeba, anti-sickness, weakness, aging, and disease. Abnormal cells, rebellious cells, broken communication, broken and missing body parts, or anything else. That's under the curse has to go and I speak healing to my body. Wholeness to my body. His body was broken so mine would not be broken but would be made whole. He is my vitamins, minerals, my health, my replacement body parts from heaven. Then I say angels go in Jesus name to the body warehouse in heaven and get any replacement parts I need to be made whole in Jesus name. And then 2 Hebrews 2.14 says, that the blood of Jesus delivered me from the fear of death. So I say, Father, because the blood of Jesus delivered me from the fear of death, I am no longer subject to bondage. I am no longer in fear of death. Ephesians 2 says that I was brought near by the blood of Jesus and I have boldness to enter the Holy of Holies. So I receive that. I enter into the Holies of Holies whenever I want because I do it with boldness. I come to the throne of grace to receive whatever it is that I have need of. And I can see you face to face anytime I want. So, so then this is what I do. I take the word during my communion of things I want to change and how I found words that relate to those subjects and put them all together with the word of God. For example, my hockey that I talked about the other day, I took these scriptures and put them together. Um, 
I skate, exercise, and play hockey without getting weary. I have strength and explosive power. I'm stronger than my opponents and team members. When I fall, I will get up unhurt. I skate and play with strength, speed, and skill. I have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and I have mastered all techniques that relate to hockey and skating. I play with purpose, premeditated, deliberate, and calculated. I am well-informed and conscious of everything going on around me. I dominate the game. I excel in wisdom above all other hockey players. <laughs> I started confessing that March 3rd. So... I'm going to con confess that every day when I take communion. Now, then I say, what did Jesus accomplish on the cross for me? He told me to take Isaiah 53 to look up what each word meant and then to say those words that I understood in English instead of the Hebrew words. So I, he was wounded so that I would not have sickness, disease, affliction, sadness, evil, or calamity. He carried my physical, mental pain, grief, and sorrow. He was wounded for my sin, my rebellion, my guilt, punishment for transgression, my offering, and he was bruised for my guilt, my condition, my consequences, or my punishment of sin, and the chastisement of my peace, my completeness, safety, soundness in body, welfare, health, prosperity, peace, whole, entire contentment, and fellowship and covenant relationship was upon him. And with his stripes I am healed and made healthful. Now that is what that word means when you go back to the original language. And then I lay hold of the testimony record. Um, this is what Eon Clayton went now. The testimony record that is now in my body, I'm carrying in my body the DNA record of God, that my bones would begin to produce the record of God's DNA in my body. And then I engage that DNA. I engage that DNA. I embrace this transforming power, power uh, of the blood in the body of Jesus in my spirit, soul, and body. I engage and re-encode my DNA with the record containing the lights, sound, and frequency of God's image. I embrace the record of the kingdom dimension and release it in my DNA. I engage the DNA record and apply it to my bones, my skin, and all other parts of my body to live disease-free, pain-free. I transform every genetic record, resequence my DNA into alignment. Okay, those are uh, I, Ian Clayton's words, uh, and they are in the PDF that you can download uh, on my uh, group. And then I say, I... And then as far as the courts of heaven go and genetic uh, curses and hereditary things passed down, I go over that. Uh, I apply the blood of Jesus to transform all impure genetic material, be transformed now, all in, in uh, I can't even say this word, I-N-I-Q-U-I-T-O-U-S genetic material, be cleansed now. All genetic material resonate with the DNA of God, come into alignment I choose to bear the image of the Father. I speak creative words to my DNA to release the ability of God to see in the spirit realm, to see in the kingdom realm, to, to move in the kingdom realm, to transform matter, and to express and feel God's love, peace, and joy in the kingdom uh, realm. Now I'm going to do another teaching about how we can do what Jesus did in a couple of days. Excuse me. Okay, and then I talk about my mind. And I don't do communion every day. I try to do it whenever I have time and whenever I'm home alone. And since my husband has a job right now and during the week until he switches to weekends, I'll be able to take time to do communions and to do parts of these or all. Then I go over the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ and he instructs me. I am one spirit with the Lord. His life abides in me as he is. So am I in this world. I'm partakers of his divine nature. I have all things for life and godliness. He withholds no good things for from me i am the temple of the holy spirit that i have the anointing and i know all things i don't like any good things he gives me freely all things i have all spiritual blessing in heavenly places i am heir of the world i have dead raising resurrection power within me i have all power over the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt me all things are under my feet life and death is in the power of my tongue i am no longer in bondage to fear of death I yield to, declare, receive, and know and agree with my heavenly destiny. And I partner with God and come into agreement with the host of heaven and partner with the host of heaven and the Holy Spirit for my destiny, for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I have understanding in the mystery of his will. I have understanding and knowledge of his, the, his inheritance that he gives me and the great power working within me. And then I just finish up by commanding my angels. I say, uh, my weapons and warfare are spiritual and mighty. So host of heaven... Today, go pull down strongholds, strategies, judgments, deceits, arguments, and reasonings of the enemy. Pull down every barrier that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. 
and pull down every unlawful thing in my life and my family's life. And then sometimes I give them specific things like um, people promise me cars and uh, other things and uh, they don't always follow through. So I send the angels out to go into the enemy's camp and to take sevenfold return for those things that he withheld from me that people promised me. And I loosen the people off of that. I forgive them. Uh, things happen that can't always follow through, but the devil stole that from me. Um, so I sent the angels out uh, to do that. And so basically, that's how I go through communion step by step. I might, you know, do a lot of uh, drinking or eating some bread, some good homemade bread and so on. Uh, but that's basically how I go through communion, how I use communion to change my DNA. And one of the things that I just kind of discovered yesterday, and I never really thought about it was I'm a big fan of believing conspiracy theories because everything in this world is exactly the opposite of what God does because the world is upside down. And I know that the pharmaceutical community, doctors and nurses, don't know any better, most of them, because they're trained by the pharmaceutical companies and people. But I know that we can be healed by what we eat, what we think, communion, prayer, confession, decreeing, the power within us. And recently, I began to understand that the same thing with glasses um, is pharmaceutical. Every year you come back to get newer glasses. Every year they tell you that your eyes are going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. Every year they tell you that it's normal to have a stronger prescription every year. But think about it. They're not telling you what things to do health-wise, eating-wise, in order not to have to wear glasses. Okay, And there are things you can do that I've recently found out. Uh, plus communion and I never saw that before I just saw the pharmaceutical but I see the pharmaceutical involved in the eyeglass industry in optometrists because you know you're you come back every year you spend thousands of dollars on glasses and contacts to look good and all that other stuff the same thing with the teeth that is also under the whole pharmaceutical thing they want your money you can actually heal your cavities by eating certain ways okay and um and I believe communion can take care of this. And so I am believing for my eyes to be what they call super sight beyond 2020. And I can because I'm a child of God. I can through communion. I can through the word of God. So I hope that I have encouraged you. I've motivated you and I've opened your eyes up to some things. And like when I hear people teach, I take what they taught me and in the middle of it God takes one word and me and God go off in this direction and then for days he's revealing to me and giving me understanding and I'm getting all excited I hope he does the same thing with you he takes something I said and just just jerks you awake and then you get so excited about it you begin to study it on your own and it doesn't become my teaching or Ian Clayton's teaching or someone else's teaching it becomes your life it you in, implement it you you use it and you grow it uh, and, and it becomes yours. So you can get this. Uh, this is actually a copy of my personal um, communion, confession, and decree sheet. Uh, you can get a copy of that by going to my uh, group, which is Angels, Courts of Heaven, and other supernatural, normal Christian activities, something like that. I'll put a link down underneath this um underneath this video so you can join the group or you can get it and share it uh, I don't I don't mind if you share it but don't change it and I mean you know I did all the work make it your own but don't make it your own and then share it or sell it okay also my books are all I have about four dozen books on Amazon that um, we, you know you can invest in them you can read them I offer them for free a lot I sow seeds and if you get Kindle Unlimited, almost all, almost all except my angel books are free on Kindle Unlimited. So have a blessed day. Thank you for the 10 of you who stuck through me all the way through this. I pray that you are blessed. I pray that God would open your eyes and give you more and more understanding to walk in this, to have more revelation about communion and DNA and how it, we can change it. And I'll answer you whatever questions I can. These things get passed around. And I can't always follow them. But please share this with your social media site, with your friends that can be blessed by it. And um, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to ask me a question, you'll have to mention me. You'll have to say my whole name. And then I can come to it uh, and read your question. If you just make a comment and don't say my name, I, I'll read through it. But as it gets spread around to a couple thousand people watching it, I 
kind of lose track of it. So anyway, here comes my commercial. I am a publishing author. Uh, the, I'm an author and a publishing coach. So if you have a book that you want published, don't pay thousands of dollars. Pay me $399 and I will format your book, create a, a professional book cover if you don't have one. I'll upload everything. I'll open all uh, creative space and KDP dot Amazon and publish your book as a print book and a Kindle book within 90 days. You'll have it in your hands. I say 90 days to give me lead way because when I'm working with 10 authors, it's really hard to do it faster. But when I'm working with one, two or three, it's easier, but it gives me safety to say within 90 days, you'll have it in your hands. Um, and I also promote books. Uh, go to my website, robinbremer.net, R-O-B-I-N-B-R-E-M-E-R.net. And um, look at what I do and how I can bless you, how I promote books and uh, create bestsellers for y'all. And check it out. Anyway, love you all. Have a blessed day. Don't forget to take communion. Thank you for joining us for today's podcast. If it was a blessing to you, please consider financially supporting us by clicking on the Sponsor This Podcast button. Any links mentioned in this podcast will be listed below along with any affiliate products, services, or partner websites. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your social media site. And remember, it is natural to be supernatural.